that he stands really right next to Newton in his role in creating a telescope that he says is used for the rest of us. John, it is such an honor to have you here at ECS Telescope. We started the whole uh, large telescope field for us amateurs. His design was a priceless gift. Uh, he could have patented that design and uh, made a lot of money, but he just gave that idea away. Uh, I'd like to help people make telescopes so that there will be enough telescopes so that the people on the Earth have a chance to see what the universe looks like. It doesn't look like anything like San Francisco on a sunny day. It's made out of hydrogen and helium. It's very dark, very lonely, and very cold. And I want people to be able to see it, so there need to be more telescopes. We, we can, of course, see the moon, and we can see the sun, and we can see some of the stars and so forth, but we've got genetic programming that covers all that. Your genes tell you how to think of the moon and how to think of lakes and how to think of rivers and how to think of mountains and how to think of people and how to think of dogs. It's all covered by your genetic programming. Now, when you look through the telescope and see the moon looking like this, the genetic programming shuts up. It has nothing to say about it. Or when you look at Saturn, you see through a telescope, your genes have nothing to say about Saturn as seen through a telescope. And it does allow somebody to get a look out beyond, from out behind the curtains of his genetic programming, if you like. It is the genetic programming that keeps us seeing this universe the way it really is. Now, I'll just give you one example, you see. We look in the daytime and we think it looks as though the whole universe is bright like that. No, 200 miles up, it's pitch black. It's pitch black up there as soon as you get out of the atmosphere. It's only on the surface of a planet with a gaseous atmosphere that there's anything like daylight. Now, if you are on the Earth and the sun goes down behind the mountains, you can find your campsite. If you were on the moon and the sun went down behind the mountains, all you could see is stars. But people do not understand this unless they look through a telescope. But if the amateurs do not solve the problem of making it possible for the public to have a look at this universe, nobody will solve that problem. The professionals cannot solve that problem. So if the general public is to see what the universe looks like, they're going to have to do it through telescopes, they're going to have to do it at night, and they're going to have to do it through amateur telescopes, there's no other way. So if, you see, there were something like a million sidewalk astronomers worldwide, by sidewalk astronomers, I simply mean people who are willing to get their telescopes out and let their other people use them, look through them. If there were a million such people and a few thousand people looked through each telescope, there would be a chance for most of the people who live on this world who want to see, to see. But you have to get it to a place where the public goes. There's no use getting it out all by yourself in the desert and then lick your chops and go to bed. That doesn't do anything for me. You see, the importance of a telescope is not on how big it is, it's not on how well-made it is, it's how many people less fortunate than you got to look through it.